Well, Doug, the big day's arrived. You've been finally given the keys to this magnificent building. Before we go in there and have a look at what's happening inside, I think it's a few months since we've been in there now, talk us through the process of this building and how it's all gone for you, how, how the planning and the building of it's all gone. Yeah, we're finally here, almost. Still, still slightly work in progress, but it's been a, what, a five, six year um, plan as this in the, in the making. Um, starting a number of years ago, say five, six years ago, where we developed a number of plans on different parts of the site, to be honest, and we've uh, we finally ended up with with this as a, uh, the location of the new building. Um, it's been on site as a construction program for 14 months, 15 months, and uh, this is the end product, a magnificent building that will be fit for what we intend it to be for uh, for many years to come. It's not quite finished yet, but the, the little touches need to be done yet. But to all intents and purposes. The building is ours now to sort of furnish and, um, and make ready yeah, for the place. Yeah, it is. Technically, yesterday we uh, we achieved what's known as practical completion, where we actually physically took the building off uh, off Barnfield construction. So we, in effect, took the keys and it becomes our building. There are still items at Barnfield uh, um, uh, on site for us to complete over the next two or three weeks. But generally, when we walk around, you'll see a, a completed shell ready to be uh, to be lived in. Can't wait. Let's go and have a look. So the first thing that hits you, Doug, is a very bright reception area, completed now. We haven't got a receptionist yet, have we? Not yet. That will be uh, coming in due course. But this will be where everybody who comes to Barnfield will be greeted. Yeah, everybody who comes in, whether it's be a visitor, a player, a parent, um, will all come here and get the same reception, same feel, and then there'll be a different route to take on the, whatever your, uh, your activity is during the day. OK, enough for reception. Let's go and look at the real stuff. Where do we go from here? What's, what happens here? Well, you have a choice. If you turn right, you go down into directly through the doors into the academy area, um, or you can take a first left here, straight into the first team dressing room. Or if you go left, you go straight down to the far end into the new indoor facility, but also the, uh, the first team support areas, such as the, the medical room, the gym, the prehab, etc., and the, uh, the soon to be complete hydrotherapy area. The way the building's been designed, it's, it's, we've spent a lot of time making sure the floor of the building's correct. There is a real um, pathway, um, aspirational pathway, if you will. Mm. So if you are down at the far end and you're a, a new member of the academy, a nine or 10-year-old, you've still got an ability to see and, and potentially look at the pathway bit. to this area. Yeah. So that connectivity is really, really important. We spent a lot of time making sure that that part of the building and design uh, flowed, as well as all the different activities. Was it also important, Doug, to bring the outside inside? This kind of looks in reception, it's in here, there's a little bit of wood knocking about and upstairs. Is, is, was that important to the feel of the place? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is a functional building. You know, we've, we, we've, we're creating something that needs to work, but it also is some, a special place. This is the players and everybody who works here, their office, they're here on a daily basis. And it's important to say at the minute, no branding anywhere in the place. That's to come at the end, of course, but this place will be fully branded when it's finished. It will, and that's really important. It's almost equally as important as the, the building fabric itself. It's, it's when the building's lived in, how it feels, how people feel when they're in it itself. And what we actually dress the walls with and how we make different areas feel would be absolutely key again to how the, how the building will be uh, deemed as successful moving forward. OK, we've kept them waiting long enough. Let's go look at the first team dressing room. Well, uh, this is quite something, Doug. Uh, Premier League class, dare I say. This looks sensational. First impressions, it's huge. It but is. Tell us a little bit about the thought process behind what we're seeing here. Well, again, similar to what we said before, this is, um, this is the environment of our, our, our prize assets, if you will. And this is where this they is. spend their working days, so it needs it to be is. right. It is. It's got to be right. They spend a lot of time in here. And this will be an area, this is their area, the players' area. It won't be an area for everyone just to, to drop in. It's, it's their environment and it's key that they're, they're, they feel comfortable in what they've got. So it is, it's cavernous, it's huge. But once you get a full squad in here and the kit and things like that, it's surprising how it will be filled up. Tom Heaton was instrumental in, in what the players wanted from it. And in fairness to them, you know, they didn't ask for a great deal. So hopefully we've exceeded their expectations on mm. maybe what they think they're going to get. Um, but yeah, there's, there's little bits and pieces like where do I charge my iPhone? Where do where do I plug in this? And where do, you know, those it's important bits. stuff, isn't it? Absolutely. So it's it's key that we get the environment right for them, so they'll feel comfortable when they're here. And room for growth as well. Looking around, automatically, I'm counting them. It appears like there's more spaces than there was in the dressing room over in the yeah. old building. In, in the old building, it was designed around a, 
a, a lesser squad as we've progressed over the years. The Premier League demands a, a bigger squad. Yeah, this, this certainly houses what we've currently got and it allows for expansion. So. Fantastic. It looks amazing, Doug. It looks amazing. <laughs> right, let's go and look through the hydrotherapy and gym area. So, last time we came in here, Doug, this is the hydrotherapy pool. It was a great big pit in the ground. Now it's all been raised up and there's individual sections up here yeah. that have yeah. yet to be completed. This is the yeah. last piece. The pit's still there, obviously. It's down there. It's, it's under, underneath all this formation yeah. here. So what you've, you've got here is the hydrotherapy area, which is mainly made up of um, a hot, hot plunge pool, a cold plunge pool, and the hydrotherapy struck treadmill area here. Which is the bigger. And there'll be actual treadmill in there? There will be, yeah. Okay. It is, it's a hydrotherapy treadmill. So it's not a swimming pool as maybe people think it is, but it is actually um, along the lines of a pool because yeah. it's got that hydrotherapy uh, system in it. Still work in progress, as you can tell. Still things going on in here. How far is this from completion, Doug? Because this will be the last thing, I think, won't it? Yeah, we're looking at commissioning the whole, whole uh, area um, about the second week in March. So we'll be filling the pools and uh, jumping in. We'll be back for that one. OK, and then through here is Ali's den, yeah? Ali B to your head physiotherapist. And this is where the players will get all the treatment, Doug. They come through from the dressing room, hydrotherapy, and into here, which is where all Ali and his team will work. Yeah, this is, this is Ali's domain, if you will. Um, it's the medical room, so it's just on a bigger scale. It's very mm. similar to what we've got across the, across the way. It'll have three or four beds in. We've got a couple of consultation rooms at the end, a private consul consultation room for players. But it's just on a bigger scale. I think yeah. you'll find the whole building is on a bigger scale than what we've got. Glass fronted, interesting. Yeah, it's just to, to, again, not to have those little um, individual holes. areas, cubby yeah. holes, yeah. So it's been designed, so it's an area building, everyone feels part of it. So if you're walking past there, you know, if, you, if you're walking past there, you're going to be a player. There's nothing really much to hide, apart from maybe a bit of privacy. Yeah. But it's about just keeping the, the, um, the open aspect of the, uh, the design of the building. OK, so downstairs, very functional, workman-like, upstairs, is where all the offices and the administration is. That's right. Completely two separate areas. We've kept this area as the, the, the say, the operational, the dirty areas, but upstairs is a completely different feel. It's got the players' lounge, which is their area to relax after, after training, and also the administration aspects of the uh, of the facility. Okay, let's head up there now. Upstairs now, Doug. Downstairs, of course, very much the footballing side of things. Up here. The administration blocks and, and where all the analytical thinking goes on on a day-to-day -day basis, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, downstairs, you'd say, is very much operational. Um, the way the building's been designed, that the support staff will have areas to work downstairs. Yeah. Uh, but up here, they'll also have a, another area, which is more the administ administration aspect of it. Um, so the way it's been designed is you've got this end of the building is the academy. So all the academy staff that are currently um, housed at the ETC at Turf Moor. They'll be all here. You've then got a parents' lounge just behind us here, which uh, will be used heavily at night with the academy uh, um, operation. We've got the Barnfield suite here, which will be a really nicely fitted out boardroom. And then you turn down the corridor and go into the first team environment. OK, well, let's start over here. They've got a players' lounge, which leads out onto the 3G, which is pretty impressive and awesome. Let's go and have a look at that. Oh, wow. So. Well, uh, this doesn't need much explaining. This is what it is, Doug. This is a fantastic indoor facility that's, that meets EPPP requirements, yes? It does, yeah. This is a, a 60 by 40 metre indoor facility which meets the, the criteria of Category 2 of the EPPP. Um, as you can see, it's, it's almost complete. We've got a, a, a DESO artificial surface here. And you can see at the moment we're just literally putting the infill in now. So this is a sand layer that goes in first and then there's the traditional rubber crumb that will get um, will get dropped onto it in the next couple of days as well and then we're ready to go it's a very competitive market and this is the latest technology that's out um, from Deso but we've we've got Deso on our full-size uh, 3G across the river we've also got a Deso surface at the ETC as well so we, we believe Deso is the right product for us it's been very successful but this is their latest product and the one that's you know, he's um, at the cutting edge, if you will. And the balcony is important as well, because the balcony and the, and the viewing windows behind us give people, the parents, and also staff, a chance to look at aerial view and maybe even film sessions. Absolutely, yeah. From a parent's point of view, you've got a great viewing area, a great facility in there where you'll be able to eat and be able to relax. Also, this will be a great vantage point for any analytical work mm. from our coaches and our staff. Uh, and this is, of course, Sean and his staff's office, Doug. This is uh, 
This is nice and modern and very airy. And of course, as we said before, he's got that wonderful view looking out over the synchronised mowing as we go on at the end, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but this is, of course, Sean's, Sean's domain now where he and his staff will work on a daily basis. It's an uplift from what he's got now, but the principle is exactly the same. He likes to work with his staff. You know, he won't isolate himself. He's quite keen to, to be part of the team with, with um, obviously, with Ian, Tony and Billy. Um, and, and this will be his hub. He's got his own individual office if he needs it as well, but you know, quite clearly he, he wants to stay with, with that team. We've again got this fantastic wooden finish on the walls, that, yep. that sort of timber, that very rough cut timber from outside brought inside. And then this is the bit I'm really excited about, Doug, the players' lounge, which is where, of course, they're going to spend most of their days when they're not footballing, and it's just a cavernous place. It's a beautiful place. Yeah, it is. Again, the same principle as, as downstairs in the, in the dressing room. Because they're going to spend a lot of time here, we want to make sure that those key areas are, are well designed and a place that they want to be. You know, rather than maybe shooting off straight after training, they can actually come up here and relax. They can go outside into the balcony if it's decent weather. Even if it's not decent weather, it's still a fantastic mm. place to go and sit and just chill out. Um, but yeah, they'll delete in here um, from the, the server behind us. They've got some soft furnishings behind here. So it'll just be a really nice environment. Tell me a little bit about the thought process that went into this lounge. I mean, it, it, it's, it's probably well, maybe four times the size of the, the one they've got currently. Where does the design come into this? How do you make this work? What we had originally was, a, was basically a port cabin, and we knew it was going to be temporary. Temporary sometimes lasts a little bit longer than we anticipate. So we've been across in the other facility for about five or six years, and in fairness, the, play of, the players have accepted that. But this is something we had a chance to make, something special, almost a, a clean sheet of paper. And yeah, the, the colour schemes may be a little bit different, but we wanted just to not necessarily put everything Burnley into this. This is an area where you want to come and feel a little bit different. You know, you, your working environment is very much Burnley and very much regimented, but this is an area you maybe want to feel a little bit, you know, taken out of that, that particular work. The thing that strikes me about the building, Doug, it's very functional. All the rooms are very functional, but you get to the player areas, the dressing room, and this huge, big open spaces for them to breathe. Yeah, I mean, again, we, we, we talked about the squad getting bigger and bigger. Space is everything. You can do a lot with space. It'll take time to evolve. You know, a building doesn't, doesn't just start operating successfully right from day one. It's going to take time just to feel our way through it. And let's just have a look at that view as well. We can stand, stand outside on the balcony and have a look at what the players will see on a daily basis out there. Mm. Well, we came out here last time, Doug. I mean, not a lot's changed out here. Except for the view, we've got this magnificent vista now and that pitch that's been completed here. That's the heated Deso pitch, is that right? This is, yeah, this is the heated one. Um, this was seeded uh, and completed just before Christmas. Uh, it won't be ready until really sort of pre seasons next year, next year, if you will. It'll take time to develop. But we've got the other two pitches beyond it, which have been in operation all this season. So that's where the first team yeah. uh, currently operate. But then they'll have the third one here um, for the. For the pre-season next year. And two new pitches going in where the, where the work's going over there as well, is that right? It is, yeah. Those are the two three-quarter pitches in the distance there. We've, we've had difficulty continuing with the construction of those because of the poor weather over the winter. That's now just drying out, which allows us to get back on and start the construction process again. Important, though, you also kept the wetlands. You needed to keep the wetlands area in here, didn't you? That was part of the provision. Yeah, absolutely. Part of the planning consent was um, uh, to, to retain this, which would be a nice feature when the, when the, the whole site is landscaped. Mm. And completed that will be a nice feature to, yeah to complement yeah, what yeah. we've got here this site has got so much potential and uh, it's now beginning to show that potential you know we've we've uh, arguably we've got one of the best facilities in mm. in the country you know you, you can look at other clubs who will have invested a lot lot more money than we have but our end result i think arguably will still be the same as what other top top clubs have got I and guess, we're, we're competing there now. I guess when Bob Lloyd first started the training facility up here in the 1950s or 60s, whatever it was, he'd be very proud to look now at what, what it's become. I think he would. He was the pioneer of, of, of that particular sort of uh, principle. You know, he was the first one to develop a, an off-site away from the stadium training ground. You know, we've come from humble beginnings, if you will, and, and that's been our home for the last 40, 50, 60 years. We've now got this, mm. which, we, you know, is magnificent and we'll continue to develop this. This will be the start of the, the journey from now. So in here, Doug, we have the kit room. To all intents and purposes, where the players will start their day. Um, everybody's got their own little cubby hole, of course. Yep. I like the colour scheme. Yep. Uh, this is probably, again, Lee's little domain up at the old building, but on a grander scale, isn't it? Yeah, with, with, with this particular area, Lee Martin, who's our kit man, 
he was finding himself going backwards and forwards uh, to the stadium on a daily basis because we didn't have the facilities at the, uh, in the existing building here. So this centres everything for him here at the training ground. So he'll only be back at the stadium on a, on a match day and uh, maybe to pick up some other kit that he hasn't got here. But everything will be here. It's all designed into uh, under-23s, youth team and uh, first team. Okay. Um, so this is the main kit area where the players will come in and pick their kit up for the day. Laundry straight through there. That's the big thing for him, isn't it? Because we didn't have a laundry at the training ground before. It was back to the stadium. That's right. He was backwards and forwards. So we've invested in, uh, in new kit there. So one thing's noticeable straight away walking through it. Carpeted throughout the whole place, which of course means no boots anywhere in the building. Yeah, that's a really strong message. I think the idea is that boots stay outside and slippers, flip -flops. socks, flip-flops stay inside. Yeah, and that'll be a quite a strong message that uh, is, is, is embedded throughout the whole of the, uh, the play inside. You know, we've got the boot room here. Well, this is the pathway. This is where the players come out to do their daily business. And of course, in here, this is the boot room. Always an interesting thing. People love to see the boot room. Effectively, a lot of hooks on a wall. But, yeah. but, it, but there's a lot of hooks and a lot of wall space. 320 to be exact. 320. 320 it's pairs. 160 pairs. It is, yes. It's 160 you, pairs. That should be enough, shouldn't it? Is good. It should be, yes. So, you know, players do these days have a, a number of pairs of boots. You yeah. have several pairs of boots. Uh, match day training boots etc but it'll also house the under 23s and yeah. the under 18s boots so there's a lot of boots to look after a lot and of a, boots to clean and of course it won't be long before this room comes fitted with smelly vision exactly we need that as well don't we <laughs> and then of course this is it the route out to the training ground so boots on out here on a daily basis and and as you said doug this is just a fantastic fantastic training ground now it is you know the players will come out every morning um, and they'll, they'll make their way to whichever pitch they're going to be on. There'll be a certain pathway to, to all three pitches. And actually all around the whole site, there'll be pathways for, for staff, for players, for vehicles, etc. And it's, it's, a, it's a big old site. You know, we've got probably 35, 40 acres on this side of mm. the site, as well as the other 10 on that side. So it's a big site to maintain. The lads are at it already. You know, our ground staff department is growing by the day. Um, and it's, it's, it's a big old site to, to look after now. So it's took 15 months of your life. It's cost ten and a half million pounds. Have you got what you wanted? I think so. I think we've probably exceeded expectations, to be honest. You know, we, we, we can look around the building and be really, really proud of what we've done. Uh, now we need to get into the building. We need to make it live. We need to, you know, really maximise the asset we've got. And hopefully this is just the beginning. What happens out there is the, the most important bit. Doug, it's been an absolute pleasure. I was. Thank you. Thank you.